20. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all, therefore I am glad on your behalf, but what I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under his feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Father God, I pray and thank you for the, the touching testimonies this morning. And Father, that's what it's all about. Thank you, Lord, for the honesty. Thank you, Father, for the moving of the Spirit of God and how we uh, were prone to it and how, Lord, when the Holy Spirit moves, we just let him do his work. And, and Father, I praise you for that. And so, Father, I pray that you'll be, uh, as we preach this message, Holy Spirit, just touch our hearts through your word, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The title of my message this morning is, How to Handle Troublemakers in the Church. Uh, ever since the church was formed, she has been plagued with troublemakers. There's no question about that. Always will be. These people uh, have the desire either to see the church destroyed or they want to see the church go it their way. Their way. Uh, according to their own will. And that's, that's not good when that happens. Uh, this should not be a surprise to the, uh, to the pastor of that church or even to those members. This should, this should not take you by surprise. Look at Matthew chapter 7 for, for a second. In Matthew chapter 7, look at verse 15. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 15, the Bible says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are what? Ravenous wolves. That, those are the troublemakers, okay? Look at Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30. Acts chapter 20. Paul said, For you know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. So this is nothing new. Troublemakers in the church is nothing new. It's common. It's even going to happen here. It'll happen here. As, as we grow, it's going to happen. So, troublemakers are still with us today. Now, unless you become concerned with this message this morning, this message is designed for, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, preventive medicine, okay? As far as I know, there's no troublemakers in our congregation. Right? As far as I know, there's not, okay? Um, so, this isn't a message of rebuke. This isn't a message that's saying that you're all troublemakers. Well, maybe one. Maybe one. But uh, I, I, th I think she confessed it this morning, so I think <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. I, I had this message planned two weeks ago. She caught an email and said, you know, Pastor, it's got Father's Day. You need to have a Father's Day message. It's a trouble starting, trouble already, I said. <laughs> so, uh, however, let's look at this. Uh, you know, the best offense is a good what? Defense. Okay? So this is what this message is all about. How do you deal with troublemakers in the church. Number one, I want you to notice the deeds of the troublemakers. Notice the deeds of the troublemakers. Verse 17 in our text. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Paul tells us that there are signs associated with these troublemakers. They have certain signs among them. And, uh, and what they do is they cause trouble in the church. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 20, you shall know them by their fruits. So there are certain deeds that these troublemakers do. Number one, the first uh, deed of a troublemaker is that they are divisive. They are divisive. You see that in verse 17. When the Bible, I urge you, brethren, note those who cause what? Divisions. Note those who cause division. Paul uses two words to describe troublemakers in this verse. First of all, he uses the word division. The Greek word division means to splinter, to cause dissension. These people come in the church with one purpose in mind, to cause what? 
dissension amongst the brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's their purpose. Then he uses another word here, offenses, okay? Offenses. It caused division and offenses in verse 17. The Greek word offenses means to lay a trap, to lay a snare in the path of another, to cause them to stumble, to cause them to stumble. And so we get our word, our English word, scandal from this. So in other words, when troublemakers come in the church, they have, a, they have two purposes in mind with their deeds. They want to cause a division, and then they want to lay offenses so they can start a scandal amongst the group. That's their purpose behind it. That's their purpose. How do they do this? By, by deviating from, from sound, solid doctrine. That's what happens, and this is what's happening with the church today. People are coming into the church, and when they find out the church stands on solid doctrine, they try their very best to get the church to deviate from that doctrine and follow them. That's what's happening today. And uh, that's what's happening today. The emergent church philosophy is creeping in, the, you know, uh, into the church today, which is not biblical. And all of what you're seeing happening today, that, yeah, churches are getting fat and big today, but they're compromising doctrine to do it. All they care about is numbers and money. We have to be careful of that. And, and Satan will allow people to come in the church to get the church away from solid doctrine. Remember the Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 that in the latter days people will not what? Endure sound doctrine. We're here now. We're in this movement now. So they deviate from Bible doctrine. What they do is they twist the Word of God and teach doctrines that resemble what one finds in the Bible. That's what they do. Fal I'm telling you people, false doctrine will divide a church and it will send souls to hell. It will. We have to watch out for those people who possess a divisive spirit and teach things contrary to the truth of Scripture. Amen? Amen. We have to watch out for these people. That's where I come in and where Mike comes in as an elder. If we see something like that, we're going to nail that quickly. We have to. Okay? I'll, as long as I'm your pastor, I will not allow false doctrine to come into this church. It's not going to happen. We're going to stay true to the scriptures. Amen? Amen? So, one of the deeds of a troublemaker is that they love to start divisions and scandal. Okay, secondly, notice they're dishonest too. Look at verse 18. They're dishonest. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own what? Belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. They're dishonest. These people may pretend to have pure motives and good for the church at heart, but there's two problems with these people. They're deceitful and dishonest. Most are not even saved. A lot of these troublemakers that come in the church are really not saved people. They are instruments of Satan, and they come in, and on the outside, they look good, but inside they're what? Raving wolves. They look good on the outside, but they're not really saved. And, and secondly, they don't care about the church. They only care about themselves, their power, and their personal gain. That's all they care about. And they love to amass a following and be in some type of positional leadership. That's their goal. They come in, they cause a division, then they get people on their side, then they get those people to elect them in an office in the church, and then they have the power, and all of a sudden they control the whole church. It's amazing how a few people can control a church. And why are they like that? Because they want the power. They want power. Man, I, I tell you, that's the one thing, that's the only downside I hate being a pastor. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't like power. I don't have no power in this church. The body has the power, amen? amen. I don't. I don't want the power, okay? You have the power. You make the choices. Uh, Mike and I just lead you and then 